Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. Anevis is um, basically like a freckle. Right. And um, like similar to like, you know, if you have um, a mole on your skin and it, um, the way to keep it from progressing into something, you know, that we don't want it to do Mm -hmm. is to um, feed the eyes with both natural hydrating things, which I'll go into natural hydrating. Because if you go to the drugstore and just get like, you know, the the drops off the rack, they're gonna make things worse. Right. So you wanna make things, make sure things are hydrated, there's oxygenation going on in the eyes, and you're getting a lot of good antioxidants. Those. Those are kind of the strategies to just kind of keep the nevus at bay. I mean, it's basically just a freckle, but with this other uh, kind of secondary thing you have going on, there's still a little bit of dryness. Um, And then in the vitreous, I want to talk about that to the gel sac part Mm -hmm. of the eye. This is a good time for you to be proactive around, um, feeding the eyes more. It's like if you can feed them more, they're going to stay healthy. There's going to be um, little or no oxidative stress that accumulates, and there's going to be little or no inflammation. Those are the kind of things that can uh, cause your eyes to, you know, start having some problems. And the the eye doctors are set up to look for disease. You know, that's basically, and they're not really looking at how you can heal your eyes. Well, you can certainly heal your eyes like any other part of the body. So now we're going to be proactive. Okay. So in terms of these hydrating um, products or hydrating things, it's important to know that the eye is made up of mostly a connective tissue called collagen. Okay. And you've probably heard of collagen. It's amino acids, protein, you know, a lot of skin products target uh, the collagen um, in the eye and in the body. So what are things that can uh, feed the collagen and hydrate your eyes? Okay, you got a couple of choices here. Um, you could do, and this this has to be done pretty much on a, you know, a regular basis. Like you, you've got to consider this like flossing your teeth or, right. you know, stuff like that. And so... You could get either a homeopathic eye drop. Now, those are usually sold like at, um, you know, a, a food co-op or a natural grocer, or you can get it online. So probably the best homeopathic is Optique, O-P-T-I-Q-U-E. And I actually just ordered these, yes. Okay. Yeah, but, and so you want to use that eye drop you know, I would say twice a day would be a good good time. And then I would do the 5% MSM. You know, my MSM is really good. Uh, The only time you would use the 15, that's the stronger um, dosage would be if you're really dealing with heavy duty floaters. But otherwise, I think the 5% are soothing. And I'll just give you the whole thing, but you you can just do it on the fly. You can do what we call the eye massage, where you wash your hands, you lie down, you have the bottle of the MSM, and you put a couple of drops in the corners of the eyes with the eyes closed, and then you take your your fingers and you spread the drops along the eyelids, you massage the eyelids and the eyelashes, and then you open your eyes. 
So that's going to help the eyelids. Um, the eyelids are the place that produce the tears. They have the glands. And usually when somebody has a dry eye, uh, the eyelids at some level are not functioning at the highest level. There's some, some impediment, whether it's inflammation or whatever. Mm -hmm. So by applying the MSM right there, that's good. Um, you can also do the second technique, which is called the eye bath. And with that one, same setup, wash hands, lie down. This time, again, the eyes remain closed and you spray the, the, the bottle along the eyelashes back and forth, maybe twice, and then you open your eyes. So you get this puddle of either Optique or MSM into there and it will really hydrate. Um, okay. Is it better to use the MSM or the um, Optique? I would, alter, I would just alternate them and see which okay. ones feel the best. Okay. They do different things. The, okay. the Optique tend to um, help the lymph of the of the eye. So that's kind of like just the overall circulation. Okay. And the MSM is anti-inflammatory. It uh, targets the collagen. And so you're good there. Okay. And then, and then you're going to see on Sunday, um, I have just uh, created an MSM mist. So it's going to be like the MSM uh -huh. eye drop, but you now can spray it. So the thing about okay. a spray is that you can get it really around the eyelids and, um, you know, he wrinkles face. It's really good. So that you could have uh, something, you know, by your screen you know, yeah. digital or in your purse. And it's just so nice to have both the mist and the, the eye drop and sure. it would be the higher concentration. So you get the 15% that won't burn. It won't sting like that. 15%. Right. So you've got that in the day. And then in the evening, if you, if you're called to do this, you could get at, again, a, a, a reputable store, some kind of organic castor oil, any kind of organic castor oil. Mm -hmm. And you do this before bed, you wash your hands. This is like the last thing you do. Wash your hands, take a drop or two of the castor oil on your fingers. And then with your eyes closed, you're applying the castor oil to the eyelids and around the eyebrows. That is going to be very moisturizing as you go to sleep. And the studies have shown that our eyes get the most dry when we're sleeping because we're not. Right. Sleeping. And so by applying the castor oil after you've done the eye drops during the day, you're going to moisturize the cornea, the eyelids, and then this other important part of the eye called the vitreous, which is made up of mostly collagen, protein, water. Um, and, and so to keep the vitreous intact, because as we get older and we start dehydrating around the eye, that gel sac, which sits up against the retina, begins to shrink. Mm -hmm. and that's what causes that, that situation that this eye doctor uh, talked about. So the way you be proactive about it is keep your eyes more hydrated on a regular basis because it's the drying out that's going okay. to cause the problems. The yeah, she called it lattice, I think is what she called it. Yeah. She called it lattice? Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So if it's lattice, that's actually a stretching of the retina. The retina begins to stretch and it looks a little bit like um, Swiss cheese. Okay. It usually only occurs with people that are very, very nearsighted. You That's have a what very yeah. yeah. So in any event, we're going to do a couple of things. You're going to do the vitreous. Um, you're going to support the vitreous better by hydrating with these eye drops, the possibility of the mist, the castor oil in the evening. Another idea in the evening, if you are inspired to do this, you could also do like a compress uh, an eye compress where you uh, could get some what we call eye bright tea. And uh -huh. eye bright is, a, is an herb that actually increases the circulation and reduces inflammation, but it's a flower, it's plant based. Uh -huh. What you do with that, you get a teaspoon of eye bright loose leaf tea, you bring it to a boil on the stove, you know, with a, with a pot of water, let it cool down. And then you can strain the, the tea 
through a strainer into a mason jar, glass mason jar, and then you can refrigerate it. And so, you know, whenever you feel you want to do it, you just take a soft cloth, any kind of soft cloth you have, and you dip it in that uh, eye bright mason jar, and then you place that compress over the eyes, that, that soft cloth, okay. for five minutes or so. That's really soothing <laughs> and hydrating. Okay. Um, so, you know, some people like the, the castor oil, some people don't, some people like the eye bright better. Another tea, if you like it, and you know, some people don't like it, would be chamomile. That works very well. Also. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could even do a chamomile um, uh, tea bags if you want to. Um, oh, okay. So, so you've got a couple of herbal choices, chamomile. You could even do rose petals if you, you know, again, some people are really into it. Some people aren't. You can get some rose petals and create okay. that way. Again, same kind of thing. You can put it all together if you want. Mm. You can do petals, eye bright, and chamomile, and make a, a nice concoction um, of tea that way. So those things, uh, those teas help reduce inflammation. They increase circulation. Um, and so you can decide what feels better to you, what's you know, what's easier for you to do. Okay. So right there, you're doing, you're adding like four or five things that <clears throat> just that hydration alone. <clears throat> I mean, if you think about skin, you know, I don't know if you've ever done this, but <clears throat> if you go for a facial, mm -hmm. they moisturize your face and they, whatever they're doing, and you walk out of there and your skin looks a lot younger. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the eyes. The eyes are made, it's basically an internal skin. Right. So all of these things, you know, are therapeutically driven to keep your eyes more hydrated. You know, the eyes have one of the highest metabolic needs of the body. You know, what we eat affects our eyes. And so the hydration piece brings more uh, blood flow, more circulation, which helps in the detoxification aspect. So, um, uh, so there, there's that. And then with the lattice situation to keep because that's also collagen okay. you can consider and again you have to look at your overall health and wellness like what you're taking what you're eating right it kind of depends on you know how much you want to take uh supplement wise but <laughs> i would, I would yeah, i'm sure you're already taking a ton of things so i'll say it in terms of food and then i'll say Okay. Rainbow diet of vegetables, you yeah. know, as best as you can, organic, so pesticide free. Yeah. And, you know, berries are good, like uh, blueberries or strawberries. And really reduce the sugar scene, or if, the, if you're going to do sweetener, something like monk fruit or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, stevia, something like that. Try to stay in that zone. Mm -hmm. Healthy fats and oils are important, you know, mm -hmm. really important for the retina um, as it has its integrity, especially the DHA and omega-3. Um, right. You should be supplementing daily on, um, on omegas and then healthy fats and oils, everything from, you know, if you could do sprouted organic or at least organic nuts and seeds and, uh, you know, hemp seed in the salad, uh, you know, flaxseed ground up, uh, you know, those, those kinds of things. Okay. And then um, um, vitamin A, of course, is you get that in, you know, a lot of the, the green leafy vegetables, but where you get, that's more of the beta carotene, you actually get direct vitamin A from mm, fatty fish and, you know, that chia seeds, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, really that the strong omega-3 um, but the key in, in vitamin a absorption is that you want to make sure somewhere in either your supplementation or your foods you're getting the trace mineral zinc okay the zinc helps in the absorption of uh, the fat soluble part of vitamin a and also if you still don't think you're absorbing the vitamin a um, you could do some bile salts as a supplement after you eat. So bile is produced by the gallbladder. 
Right. And a lot of times if, you know, you're like, I'm taking a lot of vitamin A, but I still have, you know, dryness and dry eye and, you mm-hmm. know, um, maybe even my night vision is starting to go a little bit, then it may be most likely that your gallbladder may not be producing enough bile. So you could experiment, you can get a very simple bile salt supplement and that could help quite a bit in the absorption of vitamin A. Um, okay. It's that's... interesting you said that because I just had a, like a scan done and um, uh, she, was like, she felt like my gallbladder just wasn't functioning perfectly. So <laughs> Yeah, that's why I say because most people don't don't um, make that connection between the gallbladder and vitamin A fat soluble absorption. Okay, it's really important, um, especially if you're getting good sources of vitamin A um, and still like oh, you know I got dry eyes still. How come? You know, uh-huh. so, and even it can affect the vitreous. It can affect the retina. Uh, okay. So, there's that. And then, of course, um, is there on a ball salt or a, a, a no, milk? I think just look for something organic, something, you know, okay. there's so many out there. Um, uh, yeah. And if you're not sure and you find one, you can send me the link and I can I can let you know. But they're, they're pretty universal, you know. Um, All right. And just start with a small dose on yeah, that. Smart and see, see what the dose feels like. Um, and, you know, within a couple of days, you might actually start noticing the dryness in your eyes getting better. Um, it's that fast, you know, once okay. you start. Because okay. uh, I, I, I would say you're probably getting enough vitamin A. Um, I think I, the way I eat, I think I yeah, am. I think yeah. you are, I, you know, I no doubt. Um, there are some other things that things like the carotenoids, you know, lutein and zeaxanthin and astaxanthin. The astaxanthin is a marine carotenoid. So Mm -hmm. that would be, you'd have to get that either through pink seafood or you can supplement. Um, So dosage wise, you want to do about uh, 16 milligrams a day of lutein and about six milligrams a day of zeaxanthin and about six milligrams a day of astaxanthin. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the Eye Clarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.